everybody, it's 11 o'clock and it is Monday morning. How are you all? Are you well? I'm only a minute or two late, but that's because I was finishing off a live broadcast that I did into my Facebook group uh, just now. So I'm hoping that you're here. I'm hoping somebody's going to leave a comment. I'm just checking on my business page so I can see me there. So if somebody who's, oh, somebody's joined us, can you leave me a comment or send me like a heart or something up so I can see, um, so I can see if my reactions and everything are working okay. It was a bit bizarre in my, the video that I've just done in my Facebook group or the live, I couldn't see the comments for ages. They were appearing on my computer, but then they weren't appearing on here. And then they were, oh, I've got a heart and a thumbs up. That's all good. Um, oh, I'm getting lots of hearts. Thank you. And I can see a comment. Yay. Thank you, Samantha. And Ali is here. Hello, lovelies. How are you all? Happy New Year. Did you have a great Christmas? Did you have a lovely, lovely New Year? I had a really good Christmas. It was nice and relaxing, actually. Um, I don't normally take, look at all the hearts, thank you. I don't normally take like lots of time off together where I'm kind of not doing anything, but my lovely mum and dad came to visit and they came down on the 21st and went back on the 30th. So, uh, what's that, nine days? Yeah, nine days, something like that. And obviously Christmas in the middle of it and being mummy. So I actually took all that time off, which is kind of rare for me. Um, it's meant that I've come back to work and hit the ground running and I'm kind of filming almost as soon as I need it. So I, on Friday, when the boys were back at school and freshly done nails, which died over Christmas, um, I, I filmed Monday and today's and Wednesday's videos and then the light went, it was just awful. So at some point in time this week, I need to film Friday's project and next week. So I'm kind of, yeah, playing not catch up, but I'm not as far ahead as I normally am. I obviously was all sorted all over Christmas and stuff. So, but yeah, all my blog posts are ready. It's just not the filming. And hopefully I won't miss stuff off my camera. Um, so today's project, um, Oh, I don't know where it's gone. Yeah, I zoomed in to do some colouring in and then moved the moved the image so nobody saw my colouring in. So I'm really sorry. I might well re-record that bit. Oops, that video's getting an awful lot of thumbs downs. It is what it is, but you know, oops. Anyway, so and Nikki's saying she loves the nail colour. Thank you very much. It's called Vintage Port. I'm sure it's Vintage Port, something like that. So, um, yeah, vintage port, but yeah, I managed to, it's acrylic that goes over the top, so it's not acrylic at all, it's gel that goes over the top of my natural nails, and I had this colour called hot chocolate that I had put on on the 20th, and by Christmas Eve it was all peeling, and when I spoke to the nail tech, she said, yeah, everybody's went the same, so they've actually th discarded that particular brown now, not good, so it was lovely dark brown with um, gold speckles in it, so I had some dodgy mismatched nails, so I just had to paint my own. But it meant I couldn't film literally until the 11th hour. Um, as soon as my nails were done, I came home and started filming straight away. And the light went wintry. So, yeah, I currently have my main office lights on, as well as all my many, many fairy lights all around the room. Um, but, yeah, so I thought I would pop in and say hello. Haven't done a live broadcast to you guys for ages. But today I wanted to come on particularly and talk about um, what it's like to be a demonstrator because obviously during celebration we have wonderful promotions that go on and it's a three part promotion and I get an awful lot of questions about two of the parts. Um, I don't particularly get questions about the um, boosted hostess rewards but I do get questions about um, joining Stampin' Up and also about the celebration rewards so I did have my celebration I have it here. Yes, I know it's going to be backwards for you. So this is gorgeous. I sent nearly a thousand of these out in the post along with, that's the winter catalogue, along with the spring catalogue. So I put nearly a thousand of these out in the post to my uh, customers and also to some extra people who asked for some more. And I've got another eight people who've asked for some more ask for copies rather so I've had to order more in um, and I did get most of the questions covered in there but there are always a few extras so one of them is do you have to spend your 45 pounds 60 euros sorry guys overseas I don't know what that is in Aussie Canadian or Aust or American dollars and I don't even know if our Japanese team have celebration so I don't know what it is but I do know in euros and pounds because obviously that's my market so 45 pounds, 60 euros. 
Um, you don't have to buy from this catalogue in order to get stuff from here for free. You can buy from either catalogue to get stuff from here for free. Um, and it's increments of £45. So if you spent £90 or €120, Euros, you get to choose two things. And obviously we've got these two gorgeous extra goodies. So yes, I know it's backwards, but we've got thinlets. You can get those with a £90 spend. Or oh, this one, which is just stunning. Love it, love it, love it. I can see me doing quite a lot of colouring in. Um, you can get that with a £90 or £120 spend. So there's loads in here. This one has become very popular and we're all a bit about the pandas. Um, which is all really good. So there's lots in there. So those, I kind of wanted to answer those questions. No, you don't have to buy from this exclusively to get stuff from here. You can buy from both. So that's our big, thick annual catalogue. Oh, I just smacked it against them. I just put lipstick on the back. <laughs> Oops. So anything from either of those and you can shop from here. Nano, I'm part of, I'm in the UAE, can I become part of your team? Unfortunately, you can't. You have to be on, um, in the UK, the Netherlands, France, Austria or Germany to be part of my team. And unfortunately, UAE isn't part of any of the Stampin' Up! territories. I'm so sorry. Um, if you were on a military base that was technically, I don't know, perhaps an American base, over there than you could or a British base. I have a lovely, lovely member of my team who, well, she's a past member of my team now. I'm hoping she's going to rejoin. And she is, um, let me get it the right way around. She's English. No, she's American on an English base. That's right. Um, so, and in Germany. So she's technically, she's an English demonstrator, a UK demonstrator. Hey, Rebecca, how are you? I love the putty cat. I like this. I don't know if you can see it, if it's showing up to you. So <laughs> Rebecca's put, she's put whiskers and ears and eyes as a little emoticon. <laughs> Too cute. Um, so no, unfortunately you can't. But I would suggest putting an email to Stampin' Up! to say you would like to be a demonstrator. Because the more people who are outside our territories who do that, Stampin' Up! will hopefully sit up and listen and say, yeah, okay, we'll open in the UAE or we'll open in Sweden. Um, hi Karen, can I see your wedding pictures please? Karen is part of my team and she got married just a few days before Christmas and I've only seen the one little mini video. Okay, so the other question I get is about being a demonstrator and that is also in here. Now, so we've got shop, which I kind of covered, and host, which is where Oh, Hanny's saying I wish Norway had Stampin' Up! but sadly not. I know, me too! Oh, God. I'd love, I'd love Norway, I'd love Sweden, and I'd love Denmark, particularly. I know lots of people in all of those places, and I would love those. That would make me very happy. I think we should all start a petition, don't you? Um, so yeah, the hosting, it's called hosting, but it's, if you spend over 200 pounds, uh, yeah, over 200 pounds, 275 euros, you get an extra 20 pounds to spend on stuff for free, on top of what you would already have. Wendy's saying South Africa, please. Yeah, do you know what? Wouldn't it be just amazing if we could be completely, fully, totally and utterly global? It would be brilliant. But that's because Stampin', the reason that it's not is because Stampin' Up! is a company in each of those countries. So we are in the UK. We are, I think we're Stampin' Up! GB. Um, and we're a limited company as a subsidiary of Stampin' Up! Com. And so in Austria and France and all of those other companies. So we are actually a company. And I think a lot of it is for tax reasons as much as anything. Um, so, you know, that's kind of why we're not just fully international and global. Also, there's a shipping thing as well. So those of us in Europe and I have customers in all five of our countries and team members in all five of our countries. And that's direct to me. I've got team members in all five of our countries in Europe. Um, my accountant has a field day when he sorts out my books. Um, but we buy our product from stampinup.com and have our own warehouse. We also have a set shipping rate, which has been agreed with, what's that? Morocco would be amazing too. I know, I'd love Morocco, I'd love them all. So we have a flat shipping rate of 4 95 into the UK and it's either 5.95 or 6.95 euros into the European countries. And that has been agreed by Stampin' Up! EU 
with UPS. Now I know America is different and I know Australia is different. So I, there's all of those factors to come into it as well. Uh, Shaz, I love you, Sam. You're my teacher. I made your design, many design of yours. Your kind of teaching is so too easy. Oh, thank you very much. That's very kind. Uh, Hane, stampinup.com slash en dash gb is the link to gb. Or, you know, poodles.stampinup.net. <laughs> that would be Stampin' Up UK. Anyway, and you love my beautiful hands too. Thank you very much. Yes, I don't actually do anything to my hands. I don't use hand cream. I have all of the gear and no idea. I've got more tubes of hand cream than you know than I know what to do with I'm rubbish so I think I'm just very blessed with naturally nice looking hands um, that I really do nothing to Cindy just got on a little after six in the morning here good morning Shh, I won't talk too loud have you got coffee mine is rapidly going cold because I actually started this at half ten when I was in my Facebook group and it's getting hard but mm still drinkable but you like my mug it's too cute one of the perks of being a demonstrator so that was the other thing that I wanted to talk about so obviously it's the join part yeah I know it's backwards so when you join Stampin Up it normally costs you 99 pounds and you can get to choose any product you like for 130 pounds that is awesome that's amazing anyway that's 31 pounds worth of free product you actually get free shipping on that which is brilliant as well and during celebration, you get to choose any two free stamp sets of your choice from these two catalogues. And I think our two most expensive stamp sets cost £87. I can't remember what that is off the top of my head in euros. I'm going to say 170, sorry, cost you 129 euros and you can choose anything you like up to 175 euros. And, oh, that's it. Two free stamp sets, £90. The two most expensive stamp sets in he these two catalogues, £90, €122. Euros. So it's really good. So a lot of people come with a question, can they choose stuff from here? Karen sending a photo. I'm hoping that's wedding pictures. <laughs> um, so people ask if you, get, you can get these sorts of things. No, you can't. I'm just going to swipe you off, Karen. Don't take it personally. <laughs> it's because you're bibbing across my screen um so no you don't get to choose these because you can get these for free because once you're a demonstrator you can shop and get the same free stuff and people ask sort of i have the same questions on a fairly frequent ish basis um do you have to demonstrate no do you have to do classes no i don't do classes do you have to sell no you can simply enjoy being a demonstrator and get discounted products. Um, and that's kind of one of the reasons that you've just pinged me a load of photos. I know they've all bibbed up on screen. <laughs> um, one of the reasons I joined was because I wanted to buy craft supplies at a discount uh, because you know what? I'm cheap. I'm so not cheap. I just like things at a discount. I don't like to have to pay full price. For things if I can get them a bit cheaper and so I technically wanted to fund my hobby now in my case I was I had done the craft fair circuit over the Christmas before I joined so I'm, I'm my Stampin' Up! anniversary is on is at the right at the end of March and I'll be five years and I had done all the craft circuit at Christmas and I wanted to do it again at Easter so that was my reason for joining. I wanted to get my craft supplies at a discount so I could get an even bigger profit margin on the stuff I was selling at craft fairs. Except I then, after I joined, right after I joined, I looked through my diary and compared it to my husband's shift pattern. And at the time he would work some or all of five weekends on the trot and then have four off. Um, he was working the entire Easter craft circuit season and I was like, oh, I... What do I do now? So obviously I wanted to fund an income because I do have a family of four young children. And at the time, my youngest son wasn't even two. He was just coming up to his second birthday. And my eldest son would have been nine, 10. Yeah, 10. Oh gosh, 10, he's nearly 15. <gasps> so I do have, you know, I did have a young family. and I did want to contribute to my family income, even if it was just to be able to afford, you know, school clothes and pay for after school club and their activities and things like that and with four young children four young sons of all things um, they're always putting through the knees on their jeans and wrecking their clothes and getting grass stains and stuff so I still wanted to 
provide my family with a bit of income but obviously I couldn't do the I couldn't do the craft fair circuit so I thought well I need to do something and again having a young family meant that I it was very difficult for me to try and coordinate doing parties in people's houses and I had done the party plan thing many years ago with Virgin B and both my parents at the time worked and I kind of didn't want to rely on them in order for me to go out to work my feeling very much was they've done their bit of being parents and looking after young children and they've gone through the other side so in order for me to work I didn't want to ask other people who worked full-time to look after my children so it was becoming very problematic and I did book one party and it took place about four or five weeks after she said to me I'd like to have a party or I'd like to do a party for you um, she wasn't a crafter and actually she was hosting it for crafters and we looked through my diary and there was about four, I'm sure it was four or five weeks. So it was just not something feasible for me. So no, I, so I knew kind of straight away that doing classes and parties, even if I'd wanted to, was not something I could do. Hence why I demonstrate in a very different way. And I would say particularly British folk and European folk is that the party plan model is still going into people's homes showing them a range of products and letting them touch and feel and buy and place their orders and it's still very much like that now and I'm convinced I was born in a Tupperware box because my mum did them all she did Oriflame she did Avon she did I'm sure she, I think she did Pippa D which is a clothing range um she kind of did them all and it the model then in the early 70s if I can remember it or mid 70s I should say I was only born in the early 70s <coughs> If I can remember, the model is very much still the same now. And I think us Brits have got it into our head that party plan is schlepping bags of stuff to people's houses, pushing them, pushing the products and getting them, you know, you know, having hostesses get their friends to say, you know, come on, come and buy. And I think that we have this bad Im image of what being a representative or consultant or what have you for a party plan company is like and I don't think that's the right perspective and I have to confess not, and I haven't had one for a while um, Nicola I'm going to come and answer your question because I want you to join my team I want you to join my team ASAP actually anyway I'm going to come and answer your question um, I haven't had an invitation for quite some time to go to a cosmetics party but it kind of drops through the door and you're like oh how much they're going to want me to spend? Is the hostess going to put pressure on me? Is she going to want me to spend because she wants freebies? How little can I get away with spending in order to not let my friend down? And we've all been there and done it. And this kind of, so being a demonstrator in an industry like crafting is so very different because, and I'm a big candle addict. I don't think I've got, oh, I have got some candles handy. I love candles. Kiki. Kiki K. Oh, 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 yes, and these have just arrived. I'm going to be putting these into a video very soon. It says Rainbow Cookie. I love candles, but I couldn't demonstrate it. If I was a candle rep, I couldn't actually demonstrate it on video because I'd need smell -a vision which hasn't actually arrived yet. And yes, you can do video tutorials of makeup. And don't get me wrong, I've got some great friends who do beauty videos because if those of you who don't know, I was a makeup artist and a beauty journalist for 10 years. Um, and in and around that world for a long time but actually when you stick so this is kind of me relatively in natural light I will, won't get too close up but if I stick a spotlight on my face it gives you a very different perspective of what somebody looks so actually demonstrating makeup how real is that either oh, I'm gonna have to turn that light off because it dazzled me before Whereas crafting, actually, you don't have to do it in somebody else's home. You can do it at your desk and literally take photos of it then and there. It doesn't have to be the perfect light. It's great if it is. And you can do videos and you can't do that with candles. And to a degree, you can't do that with cosmetics. And you can get an idea of it. So this is a different way to do a party plan direct sales industry and my feeling is that every single day I do a video that goes into your inbox or appears on your YouTube subscription list I'm having a mini party every day and every day that I do a blog post it's like a little mini 
workshop it's a little mini party and that to me is the perfect alternative to physically loading up my craft supplies getting in my car and driving to somebody's house and then chatting to people who may or may not be into crafting now on the other side yes everybody does love a candle and everybody can make use of nice skin creams and stuff like that but being a demonstrator in an area that i love and despite the fact that i did make up for so many many so many years this is something i really love to do and i it's such a gentle hobby and there's no there's no competition and i certainly don't have competition in my team i don't make them compete against each other at all um i don't have anything like that everybody who's in my team has an opportunity to earn recognition or rewards or things like that so i it's not a competitive industry whereas having been in other sales industries um they can be very competitive so let me come back to this question so nicholas said as a demonstrator do you have to spend a certain amount each month or can you just sign up and buy when you need to so we do have minimums um, like all direct sales companies there are minimums to meet ours aren't on a monthly basis though they are on a quarterly basis and that's per calendar quarter so january to march june to no april to june or july whatever it is it's per calendar quarter and it's about 275 pounds however the quarter you join in is classed as a grace period and anything that you do in that quarter will count so if you were to join today in january you're inside a quarter so that's a part quarter so you would have all the way through to the end of july to have met your minimums no end of june end of june <laughs> to have met your minimums and that gives you time to get going to start building up your stocks and your supplies and if you want to go out and be a demonstrating demonstrator either physically out or via youtube or blog or pinterest or instagram that gives you time to do it and it's a jolly good thing because i joined on the 29th of march which is two days before the end of a quarter so there was no expectation on me to have suddenly bought or sold 270 pounds worth of stuff shasma sale come i've lost your question when sales come on your stamping up craft online buying um I've lost your question. Morning, Katrina and Samantha. Oh, somebody's at my door. They can leave the parcel. Marcella, how do you get your customers then and how do you know what to make? I make what I'd like to share and what I want to make for me. There's usually a purpose behind it. So today's project was because on, on Friday, so if you don't know what I do with my little boys, we have this thing called Treat Friday and it's been around since my eldest was quite small. And it means they don't ask for things throughout the week. They don't say, oh, mummy, can we have some sweets when I'm coming home from school? They don't say, oh, mummy, can we have, mummy, can we have, mummy, can we have all week? I don't tolerate that the best of times um, because I've got so, so many children. And it means that they know that there's something exciting coming on a Friday. It might be a comic. It might be that I get a takeaway that night or it might be just a packet of sweets. But I, when it's something edible, I like to box it up for them. And so today's project will be, it's not on a Friday and we've still got Christmas food to get through. That's the kind of thing I will make so that, I, could, I don't know where it is. I did have it handy because I only wrote it up yesterday. Um, I make things that are going to be for them or in this case, my beautiful candle, rainbow cookie. I bought this because obviously we've got now got a rainbow set. And so I will box this and it will be a gift for somebody so that's kind of how i know what to make and i make something that appeals to me i can't try and be i can't do vintage cards that i just am not successful at them i don't do complicated because as a viewer i don't watch complicated uh, i don't have the patience for complicated i want to make simple and beautiful and for me it's very important that i share projects that you can make that aren't going to cost the earth so you can make a card of mine using one stamp set and two ink pads and some cardstock. I'm not going to make a card that's going to need 15 stamp sets and half the ink pad collection. So I make simple because people's budgets vary. And I want to show that you can make something absolutely stunning, but without it costing the earth and without it costing more than it would cost to go out and buy it from a shop and we all know that there are some nice cheap cards shops out there where you can buy 15 cards for £2.50 
I want to be able to show you how to make a project that won't cost you that. Uh, Lucille, good morning, Lucille and Soraya. Um, Robin, good morning, Sam from sunny Scotland where it's minus two. Yeah, we were, I think we were one degree earlier and I think it's set to go down to minus two today. And Bonnie's in Garland, Texas. Have a beautiful day. Thank you very much. I don't know how hot it is over there. Hopefully warmer than here. Um, so where do I find my customers from? I, I share. I share everywhere. I want to share my stuff because I want people to enjoy crafting no matter how experienced they are or not. And so my I share because I want to share. I share... Um, I share because I want everybody to have the opportunity to, to do this wonderful hobby that is so fulfilling and it genuinely is fulfilling because what I make I send, I share them, I've got a box down here so these are my recent card projects and is there one that, no I think these are the very recent ones and they will go in the post to people and so I'm sharing and I'm sharing for ideas with other people because this is, like I say, it's such an amazing, amazing hobby that it's fulfilling for yourself on a craft basis and you're doing it, but because you're also gifting to people as well. Um, and so I just share everywhere, all over the place. Let me come back to some questions come up. Um, refreshing to hear you make things that you like rather than follow a theme i generally don't follow themes i do obviously i have poodle's advent countdown which was following christmas and i've got spring watch which is coming i want to say it's starting on the 22nd so spring watch is my 14 day video series and it will be on projects it will be focusing on using stuff from the spring and the celebration catalogs so yes 22nd um it starts but actually it won't follow a theme theme um but I make things that I would like to gift and that I will gift. Uh, hello from Australia. How did you get your blog set up? And I know there's a follow up. Sorry, how did you get your blog set up and do you provide training? Um, my blog, I started with wordpress.com, which is free and it gives you some great tutorials, uh, sorry, great templates. And I used it as a place to store photographs and to talk a little bit about what I was doing. I, my blog, um, I'm hoping that you guys will see my blog. So I have the sidebar, let me just rest back a bit. Runs down one side and I don't remember which side it is that you would see that side. And there I can keep static information about joining my team or shopping with me. And it means that I don't have to, or I'm not gonna spam you in all of my blog posts. It means that when I write a blog post, I'm simply sharing the project. And it, Google is a great friend to you when you have a blog, whether it's WordPress or, Word, or Blogger or Blogspot or Typepad or any of those out there. Do I provide training? No, I don't, but I do have um, a couple of really talented people in my team who do do that. And I have a sister demonstrator, so she and I have the same upline, who does do training. Um, the training I do for my team is based on all of the other aspects, so the non-technical side. So um, how to do classes and events. So even though I don't do them, I do do them. How to do classes and events, how to recruit, how to train, how to be a demonstrator, how to share, all of those sorts of things is what I train on, so not the technical aspect. Um, and obviously all people like different things. To me, blogger is mind-blowingly complicated, but a blogger person will say that it's dead easy and they think WordPress is very hard. So I don't do training on that, but I do, I can provide access to it. Um, Debbie, good morning from Alabama. I enjoy watching your projects. They inspire me so much. Thank you very much. And Kylie and, and somebody else in Norway. And it's 9.30 p.m. in Queensland. Fiona, do you charge for any of your online tutorials classes? I have done in the past. No, I don't now. I have done online classes um, and they are still available, even though the product I'm using, you know, the, the paper or the stamps might be out of date. They are still available. But no, I don't do them because I would rather give my stuff out for free to 5,000 people who, so it's about an average of about 5,000 people will look at a video of mine in about a seven day period. And I would rather 5,000 people saw that and were excited about crafting 
then I locked it down into a paid for class and only 200 people saw it because that's quite excluding and I want to include everybody and I want everybody to be excited about the opportunity of crafting, be it making a bag or a box or be it making a card. And if I tuck something away and say, in order to see it, you've got to pay, that's just not for me. And so everything that you see on the internet is all that I do. I don't do a customer newsletter, although that is my New Year's resolution, but it's I don't have exclusive projects that you have to buy product in order to get. If you buy something through my shop, you're going to get half a ton of freebies through the post. And I will walk you over to the other side of my office because I am working on it at the moment. So you're going to get handmade gifts and you're going to get handmade card. And if you use my hostess code, you'll get product that way. So I don't lock anything down into anything hidden. I want everybody to be able to see it because Everybody has the right to see it, I guess. And the other thing is, if I lock it down into a paid for class, it means I can't recreate it. So and I typically haven't got a bag here handy or a box. If I made a box and stuck it in a paid for tutorial, I couldn't recreate it with different papers. That's it, because somebody's paid to learn how to make it. Uh, hello from Texas. So has anybody got any questions about being a demonstrator at all before I have a slurp of my really cold coffee? <laughs> More, uh, Stephanie says, morning to you. My mum loves your creations and I love your attitude and passion for your business. Some great tips and ideas. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Um, and good morning from New Hampshire. Is it cold up there, Tanya? I'm wondering how cold it is up in New Hampshire. I was having a look at some of the other day. Well, maybe that was Boston I was looking at. Looking at the weather over there, it looked a bit chilly. Um, for me, the greatest thing about being a demonstrator is that I get to share. Now, I would share my videos and stuff anyway even if I wasn't a demonstrator, because I, hello, good morning, Vanessa. How are you? Happy New Year. And it is cold up there, don't you say? Um, I would share anyway, because that's the kind of person that I am. I'm not very good at keeping stuff to myself. I'm hopeless at keeping secrets. Nobody ever tell me a secret. I No, actually, I'm very good at keeping secrets, but I want to share stuff. So I love that side of being a demonstrator. Um, Ali, is there any areas of demonstrating that we don't know about or get to see that you could talk about by any chance? Absolutely. There are bits that you don't see. So I have this public page here. I have my public video tutorials. I have my public blog. I have my public craft forum, which is where I was at half past 10 today, called Poodle's Craft Forum. I do, however, have a Facebook group just for my team. And it is a very, very busy group because I have have a very large team um, direct to me. Um, I have 146 people direct to me in all five of our countries. And overall, I think it's about 350 in our team. And in there, that's the only bit of my business that you wouldn't see in public. At least I think it is. So on a weekly basis, every Tuesday at one o'clock in the afternoon, I go into my team Facebook group and I do a Facebook live with them. And I talk about um, what's maybe happening in the Stampin' Up! that world that week. I do training in there. I don't do crafting. I've got a really dodgy bit of hair there. And it's annoying me. There we go. I don't do crafting in there. I don't do crafting as part of training because um, I would like them to learn that for themselves. Stephanie, my mum was a demonstrator with you, but recently dropped off. She's looking to rejoining as she's wanted to do it more. I'm going to encourage her to do it again. Absolutely. Do. Get her on ASAP. Um, so I don't do crafting in the training because we do that every day when we inspire ourselves anyway. But I talk about how to run classes, how to build a Facebook network, um, how to promote, how to gain new customers, how to recruit, all of those sorts of things. So that goes on behind the scenes. I also set challenges to my team. Now I'm very, I like to think I'm very generous with everybody who shops with me by doing the handmade gifts and cards and the hostess gifts as well, the product gifts. But I'm also as equally generous with my team as well. So when they promote um, up a title, I send them product goodies and gifts. And then I also get them to choose. So we had one, two, three, four, six people 
promoting last month and they had a product spend each of them had a product spend i also set challenges to my whole team and that goes into my facebook group so i might say share a creative project so i make it very inclusive for everybody even those who aren't looking to build a business and just simply want to enjoy crafting at the discount i make sure that the challenges i set are inclusive for them as well so it will be a creative challenge it won't necessarily be you know go and sell as more you know as much as you can or recruit as many as you can i have those as separate things so it's always very inclusive to everybody um that's my my goal so that kind of goes on behind the scenes other bits that you might not see behind the scenes i do live training with my team um so we've got a live event uh we've got a corporate event in april and the day before i will be doing a live event with my team and it's a big rewards event so they've been set a challenge for the whole of the celebration period hi mirka how are you doing um they not mirka mica <sighs> Um, so they've got a challenge and that will be a rewards event. Um, I've got another big weekender coming up in September that I will be doing with the whole team and we will be doing crafting and challenges and having an awful lot of fun there. So I do that. So you don't actually physically see me doing that, but I always talk about it after the event. What else don't you see me doing behind the scenes? You don't see me packing envelopes. And I've got, have I got any here, Andy? I do so you don't see that bit behind the scenes um, so these are recognition packs for the people in my team who've recruited in January so I'm getting ahead most of those are already allocated so but there isn't really anything that you don't see me behind the scenes uh, Vanessa sorry didn't know you were in so this is my business page Vanessa so right, the team stuff's tomorrow um, let me have a quick look uh, when do you have time to do the housework? I do have a cleaner. It took me 43 and a half years to get to the point where I was okay with employing somebody to clean my house. And she comes for two hours on a Tuesday from 10 till 12 and she cleans my house. But it is also something that I do on a Sunday and I have the most amazing vacuum cleaner here in my office for when I'm hoovering up stuff. Wendy, I think crafters have a generous spirit. Thank you for all of your amazing videos. I've learned so much from you here in Australia. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you. Any news about Stampin' Up! expanding to other European countries? I, yeah, well, I don't know of anything, but I've definitely said get yourself, get an email to Stampin' Up! and just say, please open in our countries. How do you keep yourself so organised? I'm a very strict time planner. You were right the first time. Mika does that help. Thank you. I knew I was nearly right. Yeah, I'm very, very strict with my time. I have very little time. Um, and so, you know, again, kind of that's, is it to hand them after one for my craft room? Yes. It's a super vac. It's battery powered, but it actually has its own built-in charger. And it's both an upright, I can't believe I'm selling hoovers, and also a little portable handy jobby. So I have a wooden floor here in my office and it scoots across that and it was brilliant. Um, <laughs> it's a super vac. I love it. And actually the boys, the two younger boys whose their bedrooms are either side of my office door, um, they come in here and get it as well. So it's quite good. Um, do you ever get like crafters block? I sometimes go to my studio and look around and just don't know what to make. Where do you get inspiration from if blocked? Um, if, I, if I'm if i blocked, I'm generally not, and I'm gonna to come to my organization bit in a second. Um, if I do have crafters block, I and I do set this challenge to my team every now and again, I haven't done it for a while, girls on my team who are on this, I might set this challenge. I tell them to spin their color caddy or close their eyes and grab two ink pads and no matter what colours they are, they have to work with them. And the, with those two colours, they can use those and their favourite stamp set and then anything else they like. That's a really good challenge. And actually, it can get your mind to work in really different ways. Um, I tend not to get crafters block because um, I'm always carrying notebooks around with me and haven't got any here on my desk because they're in my handbag. 
but if I'm like um, those moments where I'm being mummy um, and I'm doing stuff with my boys or I've turned up early to pick up the children from school because I hate being late, cannot be late, um, I will scribble down ideas or I'll look around me and there was a lady at, when we still lived in Wales, there was a lady at the children's school, another mum, and she used to make the, the most amazing clothing combinations. She used to wear, um, you know, wild trousers with really sophisticated, you know, with really subtle coloured tops. And the colour combinations were out of this world. And I used to surreptitiously take pictures of her legs. That sort of makes me sound like an awful stalker. But I used to take pictures of her, you know, the back of her, not her face. But I loved her collar combinations. Um, I've done that before now. A great place is the catalogue. Really, really great place to go. And I did it with, I don't remember which catalogue it was I did. Yes, it was this one. I used that as inspiration for a card I made recently. So actually the catalogues are great for inspiration. Um, but yeah, by, by having this list of card ideas, there goes the hoover having this list of colour combinations and card ideas um, that helps me get going but I said that would be fun I have black and crumb cake buy more you're getting a discount now um, so yeah so somebody asked about how I'm so organised so I have very little hours I work um, inside school hours only so my children go to school from nine till three um, so those are the hours that I work and I only work four days a week so my husband works shifts and one of the reasons I work for myself is so that I can take time off as and when I need to and when I want to. I work for myself for a reason. I work for myself so I can be mum to my four small boys and that I can be wife to my husband. And I think if left unattended, if I worked nine to five out of the house and left unattended during the week, he'd be up to all sorts. We probably have, yeah, the, the set of scrap heap challenge would be in our back garden. But no, I do take a day off every week with him where we go out and we are Sam and Chris. We are not mummy and daddy. We are simply enjoying each other's company. So we might go out for lunch. We might go out shopping. We're day off together on Thursday this week. <coughs> and so we're going to go and have a look at the sales. And so I now kind of down to four days a week where I'm working from nine till three um so that's i don't even know what how many hours that is what is that 24 hours um and i might take other time off because i might need to do stuff elsewhere so i'm very strict on the amount of time that i work now i do sit in front of the tv and do stuff um if you're over in my craft form i was doing this a couple of nights ago in my office in, in the lounge and i was putting together customer gifts let me go and get them <coughs> So technically I was working in the evening. So these are my customer gifts. Um, obviously not complete, but they've got to be put together. And it will, I'll be keeping that one I dropped on the floor, I'll have to be keeping. Huh. They've got adorable thingies inside. So they're gonna kind of end up a bit like that. So that's not something I will do in daytime hours. Um, the stuff that I do inside daylight hours when the house is quiet is make phone calls. So I do team training or do live broadcasts or filming. Um, things that I need to concentrate on. Um, sorry, I've got issues on my shoulder today. But this sort of stuff, I don't need to do it in a silent house. I can do it while I'm watching TV. But I generally don't. I So my time is very organised. So I kind of, I look at what I need to do and then fit it in. So I need to design projects so i'm going to be crafting after i finished with you guys i'll be crafting this afternoon and all day tomorrow filming on wednesday because the house will be silent then um will it be silent yes it will chris is in bed off nights um so i'll be filming on wednesday and i will be blogging on thursday at, no i'm not on day off on thursday i'm blogging friday and then obviously i'm off at the weekend with the with the children because chris is on days over the weekend and then next week i will do team stuff. Uh, I do team things every Tuesday anyway. Um, so all of those sorts of things. So I kind of know what I need to do and I fit it all in. Victoria, sorry, sorry going to have to go and leave. My poor twin is still calling me. Oh, she's still very poorly. Poor little Mike, get her back to that doctor and just say, no, you want an answer. Poor little thing. Six days, is it? She's been ill. Poor little munchkin. So 
that's kind of how I organise my time and sort of knowing all of the things in advance that I want to do. I know that I've my 14 projects for Spring Watch. I've got four of them made already. This is, not, this is one of them. Um, and yeah, they're adorable. I love these. I wish I could show you what was inside. I can. <laughs> shaped lollipops I was so excited to find those um, so I haven't even started on the cards yet um, how far ahead do you plan for customer appreciation gifts and where do you get your ideas from I plan a long way ahead I had those lollipops in November that's when I saw them thank goodness they've got a long use by date um, I've got February's behind me they're up there um, I have got them ready so once these are finished once these are finished I will start looking at what I want to do because I make them throughout the whole month and then I put them in the post so for, these are for everybody who shops in January and they will go on in the post on about the first or the second of February um, and so I'm making all month but it means that I need to think ahead as to what I'm doing next time so I know that those are going to be February gifts um, these are valentine themed because that's what is happening i'm going to read that in just two seconds joe um so those are going to arrive in time for people to enjoy on valentine's day because if i posted them on 4 february valentine's day is past and i want to send a little love treat to everybody that i love you see um i'm already thinking ahead of what i want to do for march and april um, and it's a case of looking around and getting ideas and so that's kind of how far I go ahead right Joe is saying I'm not sure how you came off of my newsfeed I do crafting for a living not cards though I've come from a direct sales company background and miss being part of a team would be interested in hearing more about your products and business opportunities can you contact me after please absolutely I will do my best to find you in the live stream um, I don't know how I can what if I can Oh, there we go. Right. I've got you on my computer screen. So I'm adding you as a friend, Joe. And I've opened up a message so that I can get to you straight away. Wendy, I've used some of your ideas for boxes and gift ideas for my ladies in my craft club here in Spain. Love your old videos. Thank you very much. That's my whole purpose is to give people ideas of things that they want to do. Um, there was another question. I was going to say something else about being organised. and I don't remember what it was. I don't remember what it was but it was about being organized and planning ahead um so yeah i just being a demonstrator is so many different things it's about being part of an amazing community um my team loves it and vanessa who was on here earlier is very very new to our team and she referred to us as her new family recently in our team group which was lovely and as I said before, I don't encourage competition in my team, which means that it doesn't spill out into their working lives either. Um, uh, I make sure that everybody has an opportunity to do something. So I do recognition for certain things and I don't say, well, the top three are going to get rewarded. No, everybody who has achieved over a certain level will get rewarded regardless of how many there are. And as a good example, I set up a new, a new challenge for my team in October and out of 100 I think it was 140 people I had to direct to me then 96 achieved it and oh Vanessa saying too right wonderful team headed by the wonderful Sam thank you very much um you oh Ali you mentioned you are a strict time planner and have to fit it into your school hours I do where's my diary oh it's right here in front of me. so I work off a diary that let me give you an empty page looks like that um, Michelle's asking are you doing a live video now it's on my business page Michelle um, so it looks like that so it's columns so it's a week across and this is an A5 or a large planner and it's broken down into half hourly chunks it's marked on the hour and a half hourly and so I complete it looking like that so you can see what I've got to do and I strike through there you go it's my day off and I'm not working then because it's the children's stuff so oh I'm crafting on Friday as well Ooh. <laughs> 
Um, you mentioned sharing your schedule. I mean the blank one. <clears throat> yes. So it's literally. It's column. It's a column diary. Uh, let me have a look at this. Would you mind sharing your skin? I've got that. How do you keep your classroom so clean? I don't let it get messy. I um, I clean up after every project. I have this, fa this phrase, don't put it down, put it away. So if you're working with a spool of ribbon and you've taken it off your shelf, don't put it down. Just put it straight back. Same with the stamp set. Uh, Vanessa, where do you get your half hourly pages from? That's a Filofax one. Um, yeah, that's just from Filofax. Um, they, it's called a column, so that's where you would need to do it from. Christine, can you, I order this planner online. I have, this is a Kiki K one, it's just very pretty. Stampin' Up does one as well. There it is. Um, whoops! Stampin' Ups is particularly lovely. Um, let me look for calendar. I'm looking for the calendar part. <laughs> And so it looks like that. I just personally can't work with big open spaces, but that is because I work this business at home. So if I was, if I had a day job and I was doing certain things on certain days, I could happily work with one which is just blocks. But yeah, I need columns. Creed love that, Sam. I need to do that. Don't put it down, put it away. Yeah, it, like I say, simplistically, if you pulled out a stamp set and you've used it for your project and you've got to close it up anyway, why put it down? Why not put it away? And it kind of works with with everything in life. And it's it's I call it the laundry bin syndrome. When you take off your clothes, why put them on the floor to then have to come along and pick them up and put them in the laundry bin? Why not just put them straight in the laundry bin? Handle it less. So my office is tidy. It's now messy. This bit here of my office where I'm sat with you guys is a bit messy and I do need to hoover my floor. Um, but it was quite late when I was tidying up last night. Christine, I know we have the planner, just never found it easy to work with blank pages either. No, it's, it's you know, I've never have. I think ours is very pretty. Um, don't get me wrong. And I think if I didn't work in if I didn't have to work in half hourly chunks, I would find it very easy to work with. But yeah, Filofax. Um, and just the outside just looks pretty and I'm a bit of a key K at it because I have this one as well. And this one does have um, those big blocks in it. But this is the one where I put my projects in that I'm about to blog about. And oh, it's my mum's online, morning mum. <laughs> so when I've written about a project, so when I've made the project, let me find one. So this is a project I've made, Lemon Box. I've made it, designed it and filmed it. And then, oh no, I haven't filmed that one yet. But when I've written about it, I highlight it and then it, it means that I can move on. So obviously here's past weeks. So I love the fact that my mum's on here. My mum's my biggest supporter. She's a superstar. Um, so yeah, so being a demonstrator, absolutely amazing. Um, being part of a team is just fantastic because literally I'm surrounded by amazing women and a few gentlemen who are into crafting as much as I am and they are a huge cheerleading team not just for each other but for me too and they will cheer me on when I'm aiming for my goals and they cheer each other on and because I don't breed this competitive because I'm just not we just don't have it when somebody in the team does something, the rest of them all come out and come cheering as well. And they're so happy for each other. And that is just a huge, a huge, huge deal. Um, Christine, pretty is great, but I have to find this Filofax one. So, oh, there you go. Julie's just answered. It's Filofax, F-I-L-O-F-A-X, all one word. Um, really easy. Or just, you know, Google or maybe go to Amazon. Amazon is the place you're going to find it. Um, one like that. They're brilliant. And it's column, not just a regular diary. And it's a, mine's a week on two pages uh, or week to view. It's also known as. But yeah, the team are brilliant. They're huge supporters of one another. They're really good for helping out because I'm not always available. Obviously, if I'm on the school run and somebody's got an urgent question, they can text me, ring me, email me, might not be able to answer it. But they can go into the Facebook team group 
and ask the question and it will get answered then and again Vanessa I love leaving Vanessa I'm going to single out but Vanessa had some questions over Christmas and I wasn't around to answer them but there was somebody else in the team who did who was able to support her and give her the answers she doesn't mind <laughs> so that's a wonderful thing and it's wonderful to be with people who get it get as excited about crafting as we do and love to chat craft love to be excited and yeah and I wouldn't ever want to be away from it and obviously you know Stamping Up has given me oh gosh all sorts of different things in my life I've really got I need to cut my fringe I think different opportunities in my life I can be a stay-at-home mum and you know I have worked in the corporate world but I've also been employed self-employed for a long long time and ours oh, Ellie sending up some hearts thank you Ellie um it's given me great opportunities I get to be mum at home with my children I get to go to their Christmas carol concerts or coffee and carols actually I technically I didn't Chris went but that's because I booked a nail appointment I can get to go to their they call it cafe for all where I can go in for an hour at two o'clock in the afternoon and go and enjoy a class with my younger two boys I could go to parents evenings at a time that's convenient to me rather than at five o'clock in the afternoon when every parent seems to want to go um, I can take a day off every single week with my husband I can take off as many weeks as I like because of school holidays and seriously I <laughs> Our, our, our children, British children, are only in school 50% of the year because they have holidays for 13 weeks. That's a quarter of the year gone. And then when you take in the fact that they're only at school five out of seven days, they're only in school 50% of the year. And I can take time off to be mum with them. I can... All of those sorts of things are, are opportunities afforded to me. And obviously I've had the wonderful opportunity of travelling to lots of different places with incentive trips and I'm thrilled that three of my team, three of my direct team earned the trip to Alaska so we get to go on that in July <coughs> and one of them has already earned Greece and it's just a, a, a what an opportunity and I get to do this while crafting and chatting to amazing ladies and gentlemen that's you guys here whenever I fancy and <clears throat> I think we've all got friends who've gone oh it's Monday and oh and yay it's Friday because they don't like their job seriously I love what I do and I wouldn't want to change it and I I'm a real champion for the modern woman being able to be mum and work and enjoy an income and I love that and I'm a real champion for that Julie's saying wow five hours a day yeah, well it's about six hours a day because I kind of tend to run downstairs get coffee inhale some food and come back to work um, but yeah it's it's I do that in those working hours and I don't on the live broadcast I did into my craft forum at half ten somebody said how many hours a day do you craft I don't craft on a daily basis I craft on a weekly basis or a monthly basis so what I'll be doing this afternoon, I haven't got my list over here, what I'll be doing after I've, uh, after I've chatted to you guys is I will be making cards for this month and also for February. So I'll be doing cards and because I do simple cards, as I said at the beginning, I do simple cards that don't require somebody to use three bazillion different products, I can make them quite quickly and I find that when I make one, I'm already thinking about the next one. And then I'm thinking about the next one. And actually, that is one thing. And somebody said, how do you keep your craft room clear? I finish off a project before I move on to the next. And the same with boxes. And I do kind of have a list of boxes I want to make. So I know that I've got these. All oh, these, I've got these as well. This is the new Yankee Candle Spring Collection. I have these to work with. So, oh, rainbow cookie. I really wish there was some revision because it is divine. I don't really know how to describe it. It's vanilla, but not vanilla. It's lovely, but it's so pretty. Look at the photo on it. I hope that's focusing on it for you. So I will be, so once I've made one project, I'll make something for that. And then my mind will take me on to another project that I can maybe make taller or fatter, or can I make it in paper? And if I squish it a different way, will it look different? 
So I will tend to do quite a lot of crafting all in one go. And I do make a lot of projects. I make 365 different craft projects a year. I make 200 of these a month and cards as well. So I'm making four, 450 craft projects each calendar month. And I need to do it en masse, in bulk. So I'm the candle queen, like the smell of candles, but don't use them. Um, Angela, hello, so glad you have such a wonderful life. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. I've worked hard to get where I am. I'm 43, which isn't very old, which means I've been working for 22 years and I've been self-employed for a lot of those. Um, since, I'm trying to think when I moved to North Wales, was it, it was either 98 or 99. But that's kind of when I went self-employed, so nearly 20 years. How's Fennel your fur baby? She's fine, she's downstairs. I took um, everybody down in my live broadcast before I took them all down to meet all three cats. Um, I've had to ban them from my office because the kittens, that is. They've discovered that one of them can sit on top of my photo studio and play, you know, puts the paws down and the other one's underneath playing with the paws and nightmare. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't ever change what I do. I found stamping up at the right point in time in my life. Um, I had been a makeup artist and a beauty writer for 10 years. So I was doing blogs before there was such a term as the online industry. Um, I used to blog as my website and I used to write articles every day and I used to write, um, I used to promote makeup brands. Um, you know, all of the names that you'd have heard of, Clinique, Estee Lauder, Smashbox, uh, Chanel, all of those, I used to write um, articles about those. Like I say, in the days before there were blogs and before it was an online industry and I had this amazing website and I loved it and I used to get over a million hits a month and it had a forum on it, an old PHPBB forum for those of you who remember those and it got hacked and malicious, it was a malicious deliberate hack and the guys who fixed it extracted 300 plus strings of malicious code that had been embedded into my website and I kind of fell out of love with it. It was when it was fixed, it didn't look the same People were too frightened to come back to it in case they got hacked, um, which wasn't what was happening. And I went from a Google ranking of number one for makeup advice globally to not even on the page um, because it was a malware hack and it was devastating for me. It cost me thousands of pounds to fix it and it just didn't feel right. And investing all that money into fixing my website and getting it back to where it was meant that we didn't have any money leftover kind of for Christmas and so that's where I found crafting again and it was another couple of years before I stopped doing makeup work um yeah it must be only about two and a half three years since I did my last makeup job um but Stampin' Up came into my life at just the right point in time I'd been 10 years in the industry I was old when I kind of came out of it I was I'm trying to think how old I was when I joined Stampin' Up. 39, I think, 38, something like that. And I was classed as old. I was classed as, um, I never put my face on videos. And I mean, I never did beauty videos. I did beauty writing, but I was not the new fresh faced, um, sorry, that's just blurred. I wasn't the, the young, fresh faced, wrinkle free. I've got a lot of wrinkles and bags. So I was beginning, and the beauty world could be really nasty and it wasn't a nice place to be. And so despite the hack, I tried to fix my, my website. It didn't feel the same. People were too frightened to come back to it. And I just didn't really know what to do. And I'd not crafted for a long time. I had this terribly frugal Christmas where I got back in touch with my crafting creative side or that kind of creative side. Obviously being a makeup artist is very creative. Um, and I kind of, it was just the right time for me. It wasn't that I was looking for something new, but something new found me. And I miss bits of the beauty world, don't get me wrong. I miss experimenting with makeup um, in the way that I do. And I will maybe flag up one day, I've always been a fan of the rainbow, a rainbow makeup look that I did once. Um, I miss that side of it. I don't miss the competitiveness. I don't miss the not so nice side of it when you get fresh faced beautiful young women <clears throat> having a pop at 40 somethings who are too old um 
but this is just the perfect environment for me because there is no predetermined look that you ought to have to be a crafter. Um, you can be a just an, an individual sharing a project that you've loved to make. It's not about putting your face on camera or your hands because there are an awful lot of nail bloggers out there and they would be criticised if they had dodgy cuticles. Nobody criticises you in the crafting world. It's a very good place to be for self-esteem. And so Stampin' Up! came into, the, into my life at the right time. And I don't think I'll ever look back. And I love it. And I'm proud of my own achievements, but I'm also really, really proud of my team's achievements. And it was amazing for me to see so many of my team get recognised uh, on stage, which was our big annual recognition in November. Um, so many of them get recognised there was just such an amazing moment for me. It really was. Let me just read these comments because I do get very emotional when I'm talking about my team because I love them so much. Judy, I've always loved you and you have a golden voice. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Um, Michelle, I missed the first bit, so we'll have to rewatch. Uh, hello from the States. <clears throat> Christine, you're such an inspiration, Sam. Just listening to you makes me feel good about what I do. I love crafting my crafting friends and customers. Well, that's perfect as well, because we should all be very happy with what we do. And I don't think there's any right or wrong to what we do. I don't think there is the perfect crafter. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is a right way to craft. I don't think there's a right way to stamp. I don't think there is the perfect look on a card. I'm just literally grabbing a handful of cards here. These have all been out on my blog recently. I'm happy with the result and that's what's most important is that I had fun making these, that I'm happy with how they look and that I want to share them with people. So the MIT, most important thing is that you're having fun and that's always a good thing. And if you're having fun, other people will have fun. Um, I genuinely am as dizzy and overexcitable as I am on the videos where you only see my hands. This is the real me that you get to see my face as well. Heike, is it possible to see it from the beginning? It is. This Once the video is finished, I will set it so that it shows up again and you can watch it from the beginning. Um, I'd love to have you in my team too. I really would. There's loads of you who've popped up on here who I really 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 want to have you join because you'd love it and you never know where the journey will take you now five years ago like i said my fifth anniversary is the end of march five years ago i never knew i never thought my journey would take me where i am and i never thought that i would have the house that i live in i never thought i would have a team the size that i do as internationally as they do, as they are, I never thought I would be a top demonstrator, let alone the top demonstrator in the UK, um, or seriously, number four globally. Really? It's just me. And so five years ago, that was never anything that entered my, ha my head. I was always kind of that person who did okay. Um, you know, I was never... Um, Never the person who, I mean, I did direct sales with Virgin B. I was never a car earner. I did earn a computer, uh, but I was never a car earner. I was never anything like that. And I think, I guess I found my niche. Nicola, what would happen if you were unable to meet your quarterly target? Uh, nothing. Well, sort of. So when you get to the end of your quarter, you're given another month to try and make that quarter up. And if you didn't meet it, you would simply drop off the system. You would no longer be a demonstrator and you would no longer get your discount, but you don't have to return anything. You don't get verbal beatings from me. You get a big virtual hug from me and a thank you for being part of the team. But nothing sinister happens. So <clears throat> I do have people who join simply when it's a great opportunity to buy a starter kit and to get their discounted, you know, to get the free stamp sets. I'll have people who do that and I will also have people who join to make it a business. So, but nothing sinister happens at all. Vanessa, I'm in my fifties, have a list. I have self-esteem issues. Would never ever have thought of doing anything like this. I joined in December, I'm loving it. Best thing I've 
I'm ever going to be doing. That's amazing. I never knew any of those sorts of things, Vanessa. And I know obviously you're part of my team, but I never make mm -hmm. assumptions about people. I never assume anything. I just welcome everybody. And so everybody who's in my team, regardless of how old they are or where they live, none of those things are relevant. The fact that they are a crafter is the most relevant thing and that they want to be inside and having their own stamping up story is what's important to me. So I'm glad we've boosted you a bit. I can see that I've got some PMs coming through. My phone's buzzing like crazy. So I guess I've got some people looking to ask more questions about joining. So if you've got any more, please do feel free to ask. I can't believe I've been on here for an hour and a quarter. Um, I can chat a lot clearly. But yes, there's lots and lots of people who are joining this month and I absolutely love it. I love that I get to be part of somebody's journey because that's always an amazing thing too. Aaliyah, what was your greatest challenge, difficulties and how did you get over them? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know because I suppose my greatest challenge was being a demonstrator but not a real life demonstrator and I don't know or I didn't know any crafters um, in my real life so I kind of had to rely on the power of sharing so my greatest hurdle was not having um, a potential customer base to start with now I did know people who were inside other craft disciplines so people who made soap and candles and a lovely lady who made the most amazing fudge i really wish she'd make it again oh my goodness her bailey's cherry fudge amazing so i knew those people in other disciplines but not inside the paper crafting world um a really big challenge was my early videos now i used a camera for taking photographs of makeup products because i would always do this but i didn't have a video set up and i wanted to get it really quite get going on videos quite early on and that was a real challenge i used to have a big tripod um but it wasn't an inverted one and it used to lean against the back of my chair and, and against my arm and i'd be stationary like this and i couldn't move one arm i could only move one because the other one was propping up a video from my video camera uh jeb's asking what's this about we're we talking about being a demonstrator um about opportunities and what i my journey uh, Jan, thank you for sharing your time. You're very welcome. Um, I love what I do and I would just always share. I would just keep sharing. But other greatest difficulties? I don't know. I'm, I, I worked as a professional recruitment consultant shortly after leaving college. I worked for BP uh, Retail, so the stuff inside the shops. So not fuels, but the stuff that you would buy inside the petrol station. I worked for them and then I worked as a professional recruitment consultant and which actually has no bearing on recruiting in this line of uh, in, in here. But I would always train my candidates. So I, as a recruitment consultant, you have somebody who's looking for a job and somebody who's looking for a member of staff and you match the two together. But you have to do coaching and training. And one of the things that I would always say to anybody who came to me looking for work was you need to find your strengths and your weaknesses and you need to convert your weaknesses into a strength and overcome the hurdle. So it could be that, uh, I can't even think of an example off the top of my head. Um, it could be, but my strength is that I like to chat, but my weakness is that I don't know when to stop. But the bonus of not knowing when to stop chatting is that you're delivering all of the information all of the time. So does that make sense? So if I see something that's a bit of a challenge, I'm gonna overcome that hurdle anyway. Um, Ellie, who's a lovely lady of part of my team, and she's building her team right now. Ellie, I've been a demonstrator for six months and I still have a full time job. I only sell to myself. If I was to leave Stampin' Up, the biggest thing I would miss would be my fellow demonstrators. Don't ever leave us. Ellie's my Disney princess. <laughs> Kate would love to see your video camera set up. It's just an inverted tripod, it's just simply a tripod, but the pole goes down the middle and the camera hangs underneath it rather than on top. Nothing fancy. And it's, I can't reach it, but it's just, it's a, it's an SLR camera. Geneva would love to see my craft room. I will do that another day because I'm aware I've kept you all for an hour and a quarter. And I've pulled stuff from different sides of the room to bring it over here. But you can see a bit of it. My rainbow area is there. 
and no that's kind of all of it you can see right now Michelle my strength is selling my weakness is making stuff well how can you turn that into a positive Michelle because I know you can my strength is being organized my strength is being very very organized my weakness is that I'm somewhat inflexible but I get the job done and I get an awful lot of stuff done in a very small amount of time so taking your strengths and your weaknesses always make a strength come first whatever you feel your weakness is turn it into a positive Alia, thank you for sharing everything with us and helping us in so many ways you mentioned you were going to show us the upcoming projects and workspace I did okay Oh, I don't know how to flip this camera around. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> so this is my craft space. Let me move my chair out of the way. So this is where I sit and craft and film. And everything is within reach of me. Oh, look, I've got a project. This was my stocking for one of my cats and I'm going to deconstruct it. <laughs> um, so these are some of my upcoming projects. So this is Friday's. And then these are coming up this week and these are some of my spring watch projects so that's coming up um, somebody asked about my video setup so this is my tripod um, and it's inverted so you can see this central pole which because I've lifted it up you can't see very well this is the central pole so the ha the camera hangs underneath but I will do a, a better round the office tutorial so but this is my space where I've been sitting right now um, so this is the stuff I ran around the room and brought over to you uh, but yeah this is my space and this a very very important space because these are my awards British Craft Awards paper craft blog of the year from when I was with the jewelry company very very important my stamping up recognition and my pins because if I didn't have them for me to see then I wouldn't necessarily remember that I'd got them and sorry I'm just grabbing my chair to sit back down on they remind me all of the time so but I promise I will do a proper video a proper craft room tour uh, the last one I did was not long after I moved in and I was sort of kind of still sussing it out but I will do another one for you and it is stamping up like you talk about having people under you is the company like a pyramid dish how is the marketing done I'm interested in that and I can't tell because stamp up isn't in Norway yet every company is a pyramid so regardless but we are not a pyramid scheme that's illegal it's multi-level marketing but every company has a pyramid because there's always a CEO and then there's managers and then there's staff Vanessa when will you know when you have won again this year if um, I think sometime in February I will know um, So, from Michelle, yes, the lady I care for told me about switching positive and negative and turning all into blessings. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, so I, yeah, if I have a hurdle, I'm just going to overcome it anyway. And I'm, I'm not particularly a pro procrastinator. I can't even say the word procrastinator, but I don't. There are some things that I just think, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow, and it never gets done. But that's more kind of home related, like um, ringing the company to sort out new blinds throughout the house we've been here nine months and I still haven't changed all the blinds that we inherited which are in hideous colors um or well I can't think of anything else but generally if I've got an issue I'm just going to deal with it anyway I don't stop to think about whether I want to do it or not I just know I have to do it and actually I had this conversation with one of my boys the other day um MLM was the marketing term I was looking for yes it is so it's multi-level marketing so like any other direct sales company um, but with hobby demos so the impetus is not necessarily on everybody to sell um, so 80% of my team craft no well, actually maybe 70% of my team craft for themselves they're not selling or building businesses 30% do did your family friends and acquaintance always regard your crafting as a proper job um, yes and no um my husband i'm blessed with an extraordinarily supportive husband sorry and i need to get a charger into my phone asap i bet i haven't got one in here um my husband is extraordinarily supportive anyway um and i was at home with my children anyway and i was crafting as my hobby anyway um i think it was when 
I showed him a particular paycheck and he was like, OK. And then when I earned my first incentive trip and he was like, OK. And then when I regularly began to earn considerably more than him, he was like, yeah, OK, this is a serious business now, um, which he's done for a long time anyway. So. Um, but the thing is, though, I'd worked as a makeup artist for a long time and people didn't see that as a proper job. Um, so. It is what it is. Um, I have asked my husband if he will do training courses for other husbands. Tracy, I now want to clean my craft room now after seeing your room. Um, yeah, it's always very tidy. I don't I just can't work in mess and I can't not complete a project. So I have got so my customer gifts is not mess everywhere. Two boxes. And this one. And they, it means that they can move around the house with me. So anyway, right. On that note, I'm getting, yeah, it's going ba ding ba ding ba ding I've got, somebody's asking me to give her a ring and somebody else is, a few other people are leaving messages saying, when can they join? How can they join? You can go to my blog, poodles.co.uk. Um, and I'm going to look, it's on the left hand side. It says, click here to join my team. There's an FAQ section. So across the top header it says, join my team. And then there's a, Well, there used to be an FAQ page. Oh, why's that gone? I don't know, but it's still there. Anyway. Oh, Mary, thank you, Sam. You need to do a live video more often. You make me proud to be a demonstrator in a paper craft. I love stamping up. That is so sweet. Thank you very much. Vanessa's got to go. Oh, Judy's loved this visit. Thank you very much. Do you know what? I wish I could do them more frequently. Um, my problem is that because my husband works shifts, he's not always, he's often in the house and can be potentially noisy. Watch Wednesday's video. You will find out what noise he made. Set off a chainsaw and then set off the smoke detector. But I will hopefully try and do something maybe my girls can you know they can give up their tuesday weekly live broadcast with me anyway i shall love you all and leave you all and i'll see you very soon